Hey, hello once again, fellow flight simmers and cockpit builders. I'm back once again for part three of my seven segment display videos. On this one, we're going to be concentrating on the MAX 7219 only. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to connect them, but I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. Instead of showing you guys um, how to connect each one separately, I'm going to show you how I daisy chain them to make the wiring neater. And I'm also going to be going over a couple of quirks that I've come across with the Max 7219s, which is one of the reasons that I mentioned many times before that they are not my preferred display type. I actually prefer the TM1637 a lot more. But I'll be going over those things later on. And before I get going any further, I'd like to remind you guys once again, my little disclaimer, that I am not affiliated with SimVimX, a real Sim Control, and I do not represent them. I just give you my point of view of the material found on their website, which I always recommend, of course, that you guys go visit and read everything relating whatever type of component you're planning to use. And that would be found at simvimx.com. Okay, so coming over to my table here, uh, once again, you can see that I already have, in the interest of saving time, I already have laid out the displays that I'm going to be using for today's demonstration. And like I said before, the seven segment displays, they come in two uh, primary sizes, which is the 0.56 inch uh, displays and then also the 0.36 inch, which are all these three other ones right here. And the most common display that you'll find every time you search for 7219s is going to be the eight digit one. And once again, like I mentioned before, the most common colors that you can find them is, is blue, red, green, yellow and white. And of course, you can use seven segment displays, you know, for things such as all the displays on the MCP panel. Uh, you can use them for the pressurization panel, the 737. Uh, you can use them for the radios, the COM and NAV radios. Of course, the transponder. And of course, you can use them for many other things that are not directly on the airplane. Um, or, I mean, they are, but they're in different instrument types. For example, you can display your current altitude, your current heading your radio altimeters, um, you can display uh, your speed, you know, all kinds of different parameters that you can put on these displays as well. If for some reason you want to have them on displays instead of an actual gauges. But I mentioned before that one of the primary seven segment displays of the Max 7219 that you're going to find is going to be the eight digit one, which is not always convenient because, you know, they're, um, they're very long. They take up a lot of space and a lot of times you don't need eight digits. All you need is three of them. And if we go over to the SimVim website once again, and we go over to the hardware section in the seven segment display area, um, you can see, I think I went over this before, that you can basically pretty much, um, you can even buy the digits by themselves and you can create your own. You know, you can buy different types of displays that are based on the Max 7219. And you can choose the, the like if you just want to put four digits or eight digits, I guess, you can use one of these uh, LED matrices to make you know the displays and whatever amount of digits you want to put in just by linking the appropriate number of wires but to me that's a lot of trouble you know so i would rather just do something that's already made pre-made and use it that way so i found this little website um called proto supplies but they have all kinds of nice things right here like for makers you know for creators but if you go over to their displays led and panel meters uh section here you can find um, not only LCD displays, but you can come down to the bottom here and then you can see that they have the digits. So they have three, four, and five digits in, in both the 0.36 inch and also the 0.56 inch. And they have them in the five colors that are the primary colors that I mentioned that you can find this in. So, you know, they're not a sponsor, of course, but I'm just mentioning them because I was looking and looking for three or five digit displays and this is one of the few places that I found and they're pretty reasonable on the prices too. So you can order just the little boards for the 0.36 inch and the 0.56 inch uh, displays and then you can separately order the three, four or five digit um, little segments, you know, depending on how many you want and then you just solder them on and you got a custom made board with the appropriate number of digits that is easy to put together and use. So I highly, highly recommend um, this website here. So once again, it's called protosupplies.com. So I'm going to go over, once again, the direct connection and then the connection to an output multiplexer in case you want to connect 16 displays 
onto one output multiplexer. All right, so first going to the direct connection, you can see that this one uses five wires instead of four. So you can see that we have, of course, the pins is a voltage, the VCC, which is the five volts. And then you're gonna have the ground. And then you have the DIN, which is, I guess, data in. And that one's gonna go to the D line, which is pin number 28 on the Arduino. And then you have the CS, which I believe is uh, chip select. Um, and that's going to be uh, the L line, which is pin 27 on the Arduino or on your distribution hub, the way I always do it. And then, of course, you got the clock signal, which is going to go to the pin that is going to control uh, that particular display. And these displays, actually, if we go back over to my work table here, you can see that they have an input section and an output section. So this is to daisy chain them with uh, maybe the Arduino libraries or whatever. We cannot do that with SimVimX. So when I'm right now, when I'm going to be talking about daisy chaining them, it's not going to be using the output part of this. But for the purposes of SimVimX, like I said, we are not using this side at all. We're only using the input side. And when I talk about daisy chaining, I'm talking about going from one input here to the other one, to the other one, to the other one, just like you see here on my table. Okay, so don't get confused with that. Now we're going to go back over to the website real quick here, and I'm going to just talk really quick about the uh, connection to the output multiplexer. You know, so pretty much is the same thing. The only difference, once again, like I said on the other video with the TM1637, is that when you do uh, the connection to the output multiplexer, you need to have a resistor between the clock signal and ground. So that's the only difference. Just like I showed you with the other ones, I've been soldering the resistor directly in back of the display here where I have the pins soldered onto the board. I have a resistor going from clock to ground. And that's the only difference. Other than that, it's going to be the same. You're going to have the voltage, which as I mentioned before, if you're going to have a lot of displays, a lot of LEDs, uh, you need to have a separate 5 volt power supply that is going to power the displays you can use the arduino power supply to to provide power to the multiplexer but you need to have a separate power supply for the displays that is very important otherwise you can draw too much current through the arduino and possibly cause damage if not at least problems all right so so the the voltage of course the five volts you're going to have the ground the common ground throughout the whole system you're going to have the din once again the data in which goes to the D pin or the D line on pin number 28 on the Arduino. Uh, the CS, which I think is chip select, and uh, that's going to go to pin number 27 on the Arduino, which is the L line. And then, of course, you got the clock signal, but now instead of going to the pin on the Arduino, it's going to go to the pin on the output multiplexer that you're going to assign a display to. So this time I'm going to do it a little bit different just because, you know, I already have everything connected and I, I thought it was better just to show you guys like this. So I'm going to take myself out of the picture here and we're just going to follow each line. So as you can see right now, the, the voltage line is a very top one here. So I just went from here to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And then I finally got the line over here, which is the one that's going to connect to the five volts. So once again, since I only have four displays here, I am going to use the Arduino power for these four displays. But if I was going to be using a, a separate power supply, I would basically connect that to the power supply that I'm providing the power to. Okay. Now the ground, once again, same thing. I got the ground here and then it's going to come over to this one, come over to this one, come over to that one, and then go to the ground for the whole entire system. And that's what I mean by daisy chaining them. So I'm daisy chaining all the wires. I'm not daisy chaining the displays. And you can see that by just by connecting the ground now, I got power to one of them at least. I'm not sure why only one. And it's kind of bright too. So I'm going to go ahead and put my little film that I always put on them just to make them more readable and nicer. Okay, so there I go. I got all the, the grounds connected and I put all the little... Um, window tint on it so they won't be so bright and so they look better so now the next one i think i will do the the d line which is going to be my light purple wire right here so i go from this din pin on this display to this one to this one to this one and then the finally the purple wire comes out over here and that's going to go to the pin 
on the D line, which is going to be pin number 28 on the Arduino. All right, so that one is on the D line already. And I'm not really sure why these things are flickering on and off because I, first of all, I never seen that happen before, before now when I was playing around with them earlier. So that was the D line that's going to go over here to pin number 28. Uh, next one is going to be the green one. That's going to be the L line, which is going to go to pin number 27 on the Arduino, or in this case, in my distribution hub that goes to pin number 27 on the Arduino. So if we follow the blue line here, I'm sorry, the green line, we're going to go from here to this one once again, to this one, to this one, and to this one. So that's basically all I'm doing is that instead of running four wires the way I was doing on all my previous videos on, on the displays, I'm just doing it all together with one wire. So this one will go right here to the D line. I'm sorry, to the L line. And uh, that's it for that one. Now, the only one that does have to be its own cable, if we go back over to the website also, you can see that out of each one, the clock signal is going to go to a different pin, whether it's from a DM13A uh, seven segment display, a Mac 7219, or a TM1637. They all go to a separate pin, either on the output multiplexer or directly on the Arduino, like I mentioned before. So that one, I do have a separate one for each one. So for this display right here, I'm going to go to pin number 32 on the Arduino. So I'll go ahead and put that one over here. And thankfully, this Arduino has the numbers right here uh, and also on the side right here. So it's very easy to see that I'm connecting it on the right one. And then this one right here, I'm going to put on pin number 36 on the Arduino direct. So there's that one. And now these two right here are going to go on the output multiplexer. Now I know I didn't show them. I'm not sure if I can show them right here still. I do have already the resistor right there soldered on so that, you know, basically when you have a lot of displays on the output multiplexer, like I mentioned in the previous video, you need to have that resistor so that you don't have random displays, you know, going on and off with different digits or, or garbled digits. So that's very important to do that. So this one up here, I'm going to put on pin number three of the output multiplexer. So I'll grab this wire here, which I had kind of hidden back there. And I'll put that one on number three right there. And then last but not least, this is a five digit one. And this is a three digit um, display here. So that's going to be this wire here. That's going to go to pin number 12 on the output multiplexer right there. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, assign the COM1 standby on this one right here. That's an eight digit one. And then I'm going to do the altitude on the MCP panel right here on this one, which is a five digit one. Then I'm going to do the vertical speed one here on this, is this one, which is also a five digit one. And then I'm going to do uh, the heading on this one. That's a three digit one. So as you can see, the wiring looks a lot neater when you do it like this daisy chain instead of having, you know, 10, well, it's going to be five wires. So you would have basically 20 wires uh, going all over the place right here if I wasn't to do the daisy chaining. But since I did, now I only have like the four wires here for the two signal lines, the positive and negative, and then I have the four individual clock signal lines. So it's a lot cleaner this way. So we'll come back over to the website. We'll go to the configuration tool and we'll start a new configuration. Okay, like always, we're going to start with the direct connection ones. So we first have to click on seven segment right here and we have to tell the configurator where we want to put some displays. So we're going to put one on pin number 32, I said. So we'll go ahead and click on it there and we'll say yes. And this time we are using Mac 7219. So like I mentioned on the previous video, by default, it always assigns a max 7219. So you can go ahead and leave that like that. And, and then we're going to put what we want to put on this one, which is going to be the COM1 standby. Actually, for this one, it does actually have the 737 radio. So we can go ahead and click over here. And we'll put the COM1 standby. And we'll put it in there. All right. Now, for the second one, we're going to go to pin number 36. I believe that's where we said we put it. And we're going to select that and it's already a max 7219 which is okay for this one 
and then we're going to put the autopilot or the mcp panel altitude in that one so we come back over here to the mcp panel we click on the altitude one and then we put it in there and that's it we're done all right so now we got to tell the configurator that we have an output multiplexer that we want to connect some displays to so remember what i said before the first thing you need to do when you want to assign an output multiplexer is you click on the pin again and when the little legend table opens here you go to the bottom and you say add output multiplexer and then you select the pin where you want to add that multiplexer so now that it turned pink we have an output multiplexer as it says right here assigned so now when you click on that then you see the pins that are available on that output multiplexer and once again i said that the five digit one was on pin number three so we're going to assign one there and we tell it yes we want to connect a new seven segment display so now in order to assign whatever we want which is in this case going to be the vertical speed of the mcp panel right here we basically just put click on that put it in there and it's already a max 7219 like i said so we're good to go on that one now to assign the last one is a three digit display we got to go to pin number 12 on the output multiplexer here so we tell it asks us again if we want to connect the seven segment display we say yes and then we have it available now so we can go ahead and click on the heading and we can put it in there so that's it we're all done so now we need to do now is save the configuration file and of course we're going to put it like always in our simvimx folder and it's going to be called data the way it should be okay and that's it so now i'm going to go ahead and uh, start up the simulator i'll show you guys the problems that i have come across with the displays but i'm also going to show you the workarounds or solutions that i have found so we'll see you as soon as the simulator is up and running all right now through the magic of video editing i'm here in the simulator and we got our display window up here we got our simulator down at the bottom and we got myself so i'm going to go ahead and uh, reload the configuration just to see that everything comes alive and as you can see um, all the displays came alive but we got some problems here so you can see that the frequency here is showing okay it's showing five digits only but it's showing everything okay but the one right here which is the altitude you can see that i have 14,900, and it's showing 14,900 backwards right here and I've noticed this every time I've tested this, you know, so I'm going to show you what you need to do to take care of that. But there's another problem right here. We got the 266, which is the heading. It's also backwards. And then we got a negative 1200 on the vertical speed, which you can't really see right here because uh, on the airplane, on the simulator, it doesn't show it. But for some reason in the real live one, it does show it even if it's blanked out over here. But that's okay at least we can see that the display works which is what really matters so now the only thing that i can tell you here is that like for example even if i move the altitude you can still see that it's it's wrong right it's still backwards and if i move the heading uh you can see that it's still backwards so this is one of those problems that i mentioned that i don't like about the max 7219s and i'm not sure if it's really a problem with a SimVimx configurator, the way it, it behaves with the data. But I'm gonna show you what we need to do. So obviously we have a problem with this one here, which is the altitude, which is on pin number 36, right? So what I'm gonna do now is go back over to the website here and we're gonna go to pin number 36 over here. And if you click on, on uh, here, you can see that it has a mirror display, which is not chosen right now. So I'm not sure why it's showing it mirrored but what I figured is if you click on that and you click done, then it, it should reverse it. Now, we also have the same problem with these two, which is the one on pin number three and pin number 12 on the output multiplexer. So I'm going to go ahead and go back over to the website. And we're going to change. Uh, we're going to go to the output multiplexer here and we're going to go to number three. And we'll click on that one and put mirrored done. And then we'll click also on the one on pin number 12 and click up here on max 7219 and click mirror and done all right now by doing this i'm going to show you that now we introduced a new problem the, i've seen it every time before it would be funny if i don't see it now but i'm going to show you what it is if it shows up and i'm going to show you how to fix that problem now 
but you should only have to do this once and then once you save the configuration file it should be okay so i go ahead and save the configuration file and i'm going to tell it to overwrite the one that i already saved before which is called data so say yes and then we can go back over to the simulator here and we're going to refresh or reload the configuration here okay so now the speed came alive you see that but it was showing only eights until i moved it and that's one of the things that i've noticed that every time i do that it always shows some of the displays always show eights until we move something so let me just reload the configuration again all right and once again you can see that this one is showing just eights so i'm going to go ahead and move the heading here and then you can see that now it's behaving properly now if i move the vertical speed here it's still backwards right there right i'm not sure why because i already fixed it and uh, obviously the altitude over here is still backwards as well so if we go over to the website over here and we go over to the configuration file um, you can see on the devices this one right here should be reversed that's what the uh, f equals i i guess is format equals inverted so it is showing up right there this one is inverted too and this one is inverted too so now let me show you another thing that i found that fixes the problem and i think this might be what's going on right here so another option that we have which i was going to do an hour i am going to do a completely different video on on these options but i guess i have to show you this now so if you if you click for example on the altitude one here and you go to edit there's actually some things you can do here and so if i put right here a zero for the positioning from the right side as like offset and i click on that and then I'm going to do the same for, I'm going to do it for the vertical speed one, which is the one on number, multiplexer number three. And I'll go ahead and put that the same way on that one. I'll put a zero. And I have found in the past that this has helped. So now that I did that on both of them, I'm going to go ahead and save the configuration file again. Yes. And then we can come back over to the simulator, reload the configuration. And you see how now, uh the vertical speed also shows 88880 and the altitude one shows 88880 that gives me hope that this is going to work now so if i go over first to the vertical speed and i move it yep you can see that now it's working properly so that was my second solution that i was going to propose to you guys uh, but i was assuming that the first one was going to kind of work and then this would be something that you would have to do maybe separately I obviously had to do it in order to get everything working properly. So now that one's working. Now the heading is also showing triple zero, but we, we did see that that one was working properly after you move it. Um, but like I said before, this is one of those things I hate about Mac 7219s is that they show eights until you move it. The only one that doesn't do that is this one right here. So we're going to go ahead and leave that. And then we're going to go to the altitude one, which right now is showing... 88880 but as soon as i move the altitude you can see that now it's showing the correct one so going back to the website just to recap you would have to basically i'm going to do it on pin number 36 here so you would basically have to make sure you put mirrored right here first click done and then you click on the parameter you click edit and then you put a zero in here which if it's zero i don't even know why you would need to put it that's why I'm thinking it's just something with a configurator maybe that's an issue. So hopefully this is an issue that will no longer be present in the future. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to Vlad's attention. But um, So hopefully this is an issue that you won't have to worry about in the future by the time you get to do this. But well, even if you're doing it now pretty soon, at least you know now how to go you know, around it, how to work around the issue. And as you saw right now, they are working properly now. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for this video on the Mac 7219. So now hopefully you understand why I've mentioned many times already. And I'm going to be mentioning it again on some special videos that I have coming up after I do the options video on 7 segment displays. Um, but you can see that the, it's pretty straightforward. Once again, the only thing is that you have now five wires instead of four. So, you know, other than that, the most important thing to keep in mind is that you can go and purchase uh, boards in three four five or eight digits 
um, but obviously if I was going to use four digit ones or six digit ones I would rather use the TM1637 for all the reasons you already saw so um, and other than that if you're going to use a lot of displays make sure you provide a separate power supply for them and that's pretty much it um, now if I did miss something here on this video you can go ahead and leave me a comment down below or you can send me an email at CosmoKid, like my YouTube channel, at gmail.com. And then I will see if I can answer whatever other questions you have. All right. Well, once again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.